Hey guys, welcome back to another video where we take a look at the economies of different countries around the world. Today we'll look at Sweden, an amazing Scandinavian country which is known for its natural beauty like the Alps and the Northern Lights, and also known for having some of the happiest people in the world. But Sweden wasn't always this developed. It used to be a poorer country facing many problems, a far cry from the successful and renowned Swedish model today. Sweden was a relatively poor country during the 1800s, with an economy mainly based on the primary sector of agriculture. Sweden used the Industrial Revolution from the turn of the 19th to the 20th century to accelerate their growth, taking them to the top of the world in the coming decades. In the 1900s, almost half of all Swedes were involved in agriculture, but something that is even more newer, modern machinery enabled the modernization of that sector, making it more efficient, as well as allowing for the development of other sectors. They also soon became major exporters of steel, iron and wood. The rise of European economies during this period, as well as the strong development of Swedish industry and exports, began to produce a great demand for Swedish products at that time. As well as this, many joint stock companies were established and today, multinational companies operate in the country, such as Ericsson and ABB. Further, at the beginning of the 1900s, the rivers and waterfalls in the country acted as a catalyst for industrial production as it enabled the country to produce lots of cheap, clean electricity, allowing the Swedish industry to compete on the global stage. The basis of the Swedish economy was engineering and producing natural resources through mining steel and exporting wood. Sweden, throughout its many stages of development, has for the most part been able to adapt to changes, allowing for success in the long term. Despite Sweden not participating in the First and Second World Wars, it did still have a significant impact on their economy. After the First World War broke out, there was a major economic crisis within the country, with unemployment rising to 30% in 1921, and many companies going bankrupt, making this one of the most difficult periods for the industry in Sweden. This was followed by a period of recovery which shortly ended when the Great Depression began in the United States in 1929, affecting many countries around the world, including Sweden. Even in the early 30s, unemployment was still high, rising to almost 25%, and export volume also dropped due to a decrease in foreign demand for products. Sweden severely devalued its currency against the dollar in 1931, trying to support exports and the timber and mining sectors. This allowed Sweden to cope with the economic struggles at the time. The first steps were taken towards the establishment of the Swedish model, a strategy for inclusive economic growth. Politicians wanted to take greater responsibility for social problems and influence business conditions within the country. The establishment of the Swedish model after the Second World War was followed by a period of economic prosperity. Sweden did not partake in this war either and their industrial plants and labour remained intact, which was good for them in the post-war reconstruction of Europe. The Swedish model then emerged as a historic compromise between a socially democratic government and a privately owned industrial sector. And thus, it created a somewhat common ground between a communist planned economy and capitalism. Many large companies are privately owned, however, at the same time, some sectors have public state owned monopolies. So, in short, a large privately owned industry and a large tax financed public sector. The economy consists of strong trade unions and a state with an active role through various labour market policies. At first, this model worked well. From the 50s to the late 70s, Sweden was one of the most successful Western countries. Between 1960 and 1965, average GDP growth was 5.3%, while productivity grew at a rate of 5.6 per year. But during the 1960s, there were strong changes in the labor market. Although in the post-war years, unemployment was very low, as little as only 2%. In some industries, such as textiles and leather, gave way under pressure from growing international competition during 60s and 70s. There was a strong growth of the public sector and the social system, which increased the pressure on the tax system, and Sweden is still known for its relatively high tax burden. During the 1970s, problems came again. Export-oriented Sweden was hit hard by the oil crisis in the first half of the 1970s. The decline in global economic activity brought to the surface problems which are not visible as the economy grew strongly in the 1960s. High taxes and various regulations have now become too much of a burden in the 1970s and the government tried to save sectors of the industry such as steel mills and shipyards through providing subsidies. However, this proved to be a short-term solution for maintaining employment in the economy. They also tried to devalue the currency, which raised the competitiveness of some sectors in the short term, but even that was not a long-term solution to the problem. The solution came during the 80s in the form of deregulation. 
Sweden realized that during the 1980s that if it wanted to increase competitiveness in the global market, it had to deregulate a number of sectors. Years of economic growth followed until the 1990s when Sweden faced the bursting of the real estate bubble, which arose after the deregulation of the financial market and a strong increase in lending. But Sweden then made a new turn after this crisis when they introduced a balanced budget. Government spending was limited in order to bring public finances to a positive level. First, a restriction on public spending, which was introduced in 1996, which was widely supported by all policymakers, both on the right and left. The goal was to achieve a budget surplus so as not to accumulate public debt and pass it on to the next generation. Subsequently, in 2007, the Fiscal Policy Council was established to compose of experts tasked with monitoring whether government spending is in line with the goals of growth, employment and long-term sustainability of public finances. Sweden has thus become one of the most financially responsible countries in Europe. Today, Sweden has about 10 million inhabitants and a GDP per capita that is over $51,000, which ranks it among the richest countries in the world. Although it has a very strong industry, as much as 65% of GDP is made up of services, while industry participates with 33% and agriculture with only 1.6%. Smart public finance management has enabled them to avoid sudden cuts during and after the last global financial crisis, and they have even managed to cut taxes. Today, Sweden is a modern economy focused on high technologies, Many globally known technology companies such as Skype and Spotify have their roots in Sweden. Although Stockholm is the capital and business centre of Sweden, other parts are also very developed. They are the only country in the European Union where all of the regions have above average GDP. In return for high taxes, Swedes are provided with a broad spectrum of public services and social welfare benefits that guarantee a minimum living standard, provide aid in emergencies and narrow the income inequality within the country. All residents are covered by national health insurance, administered by the individual countries. Health conditions in Sweden are among the best in the world. Infant mortality is low and the average life expectancy at birth is high. For highly specialised healthcare, Sweden has several major hospitals which also function as teaching hospitals in order to teach the next generation of medics. Although faced with numerous challenges, thanks to many adaptations that the Swedes have made, not to mention reforms, they managed to join the global development follow industrial revolutions and transform into one of the best countries in the world. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If I've missed anything, please be sure to mention it in the comments and I'll do my best to reply to everyone. If you want to check out our other videos, you can follow our Economies of the World playlist. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.